Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of The Real Life Show, Living with a Chronic Illness. Today, just a heads up, there's going to be a lot of sass on this episode. Yeah, there's already so, so much So if you sass. don't like... <laughs> it took Cassie like five minutes to actually start recording this episode because we're just in a sassy mood. And yeah. today, we're talking about showers because sometimes showers suck ass and they're really hard and they can make you really tired and even for me someone who does not have an illness I just don't want to shower sometimes because it sounds like a lot of work so I can only imagine if it showers that suck and shivering with sass Okay, Cassie is trying to figure out a title for this episode, and that's what it so far is, I guess. But because you so, just said showers suck, and they do sometimes. So they I do like sometimes that. suck. Mm-hmm. So, Cassie, will you start by telling our lovely listeners about your shower experience since you got your chronic illness? Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. We are sassy today. Um, okay. So it's in the air. It's in the air. So, um, and this episode is brought to you from my bed, laying here with a multitude of pillows and hot water bottles under my bum, just, just so y'all know. Cassie, is, we're recording this a week and a half after you had your surgery? Yes, that's correct. A week and a half after the surgery. And so um, if you'd like to see like the most unflattering angle possible of me then watch this in our patreon you can watch our videos yay and if you're like cassie what surgery are you talking about head on over to our instagram at yeah Hello, or at the real spoonies unite i can remember yeah. what our instagram handle is yeah and then check out the stories that are saved um, there's a highlight for fistula journey because yes. i just had fistula surgery so anyways um okay so showers have been a difficulty for me for, I mean, I, I'm at least definitely going back like five years off the top of my head. Um, so showers take a lot of spoons for me. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. Like, why are they so much energy? It was for me that it would be like taking a shower was the equivalent or sometimes even harder than like going to the grocery store. Um, and I definitely noticed that I had a hard time with showers around like that five years ago because I would take a shower and feel like I was going to like faint right after or while I was in it. And I would like really quickly be like, you know, rinsing my hair or finishing showering. And um, I would end up just like having to lay on my bed in my towel just with my hair wet. So I could just like, I don't, cool off isn't the right say, but I think that almost that was part of it. Now that I've done the cold showers, which we're talking about, I'm wondering if I was needing to cool off, but I had to just lie down in my towel on my bed. And that was just the case for like ever for years. And so I could never shower in the morning because if when I would take a shower, I'd be in the shower for probably, I don't know, like what, 10 to eight to 12 minutes. How long is a regular, is a shower on average? I wonder 15 minutes or less probably. I think it depends on the person because I'm going to tell you right now, I am the queen of long ass hot showers. Okay. Like yeah. I can take a shower for an hour. Well, it's been a long time since I did this, but I, I could take an hour long shower. If I really want to. Damn. That sounds nice. Okay. Well, I always listen to music. <laughs> I always yeah, listen that's to what music. I do too. And yeah. so suddenly an hour's passed and I'm like, Oops. right. I totally get that. So I guess in my head, I'm usually around three songs in the shower. So I'd when say that's I'm, around 12 minutes. When I'm letting, like, actually, like, working on the shower, not just standing there under hot water, yes, that, that's probably about, about. Okay, sweet. About actually. three songs, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's how, about how long my shower would be. And then I would spend around half an hour laying in my bed with a towel on, recouping. And then, you know, I might have those, like, 10 to 15 minutes to throw a little bit of makeup on. And at the time, for several years, I had long hair. And if my hair was wet and I like put it up in a braid or a ponytail, I'd be freezing all day, like my temperature. And especially because I lived in Montana, winter, I could not exist with cold hair. I would literally freeze to death. So I always had to blow dry my hair. So the showering situation was like an hour and a half process because I'd shower for 12 minutes, lay down for 30 minutes, maybe put a bit of makeup on five, 10 minutes, and then blow dry my hair. Usually I would sit on the toilet 
like with the lid down or whatever while I blow dried my hair because I couldn't stand and do it. That is like way too much effort. And so forget like blow drying with a round brush. That was never going to happen. It's literally just like elbow on my knee holding the blow dryer like somewhere in the direction of my hair. <laughs> and um, just get in dry. Yeah. So I cut my hair um, in summer of 2017. My hair was almost down to my belly button and I chopped it to like just below my ear. Oh my God, it was? Yeah. What? I know. It was super long. I'm and trying to picture this right now. Like, your hair was longer than mine? Yeah, it was. It was not quite as thick and curly yeah. as yours because the longer my hair gets, the like more stringy it gets at the bottom. Whereas mm-hmm. yours is like really nice and full. But yeah, seeing your braid right now, yeah, my hair was longer than yours. <laughs> and so yeah, I, it was really long. And then I was like, fuck this. And I chopped it all off to like just below my ears. And it was like the best move I ever did because then I got to air dry my hair after the shower. I like hardly ever blow dried it. It would dry fast enough that I wouldn't be like freezing to death and it would be so much less work to shower. And, um, I had a great hair stylist, so it air dried. Well, I only had to just touch up like the little pieces of hair around my face. And I have stayed with that short hair for three years now. I'm kind of growing it out again because I miss braiding. So now Braids with COVID, nice. my hair is probably like, what, just, just to shoulder level now, I think. And I'm kind of growing it out. But that being said, I may not. But the cold showers has made me feel like maybe I could, which we're going to get to. So anyways, that's just to give you guys all a little rundown of like how exhausting showers were. I began to look into like shower chairs. I would like, so I'm, I have partly Indian blood, um, as in like Asia Indian. And so I'm not very hairy, which is really like a blessing. So my legs, like all my friends kind of talk about it. Like I don't have to shave my legs hardly like ever. And you can't even really see the hair and it's quite soft. So I would only shave my legs like, I don't know, once or twice a month in the summertime in a bikini. And in the wintertime, I just say, fuck it. And so that would eliminate shower time huh that sounds nice (laughs) yeah it's pretty nice I'm very lucky to be able to get away with that um because you can hardly tell but so anyways I would have to do things like that to just cut down on shower time um so anyways so I was talking about this to my boyfriend and um I took a shower like when he came to visit and after I took the shower I would just like literally like put my underwear and stuff on I had the towel on my hair and I just like laid on the bed and like literally couldn't move for like 20 minutes I was just trying to like catch my breath and like come to and he was telling me that he does cold showers and I was just sort of like no I'm always freezing to death I'm never taking a cold shower like fuck that and um he has some psoriasis and he was saying that it's really great for his skin so if you have like psoriasis or dry skin like hot showers are really like, it can aggravate that. And so he started taking cold showers for that purpose. And I was kind of like, well, that's pretty interesting. But I was like, it's not for me. I don't have dry skin, you know, and it was like, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and then he was like, he told me to watch Goop on Netflix and the Wim Hof episode that's on there. And so um, I was talking about like the cold showers and how cool Wim Hof was. And so I looked at that and I was like, okay, well now I kind of want to try it. So I was beginning to like ponder it in my head. And then it was really weird because it was like a week later that one of my clients was like talking all about how she loves cold showers. And I was like, is this a sign? And then um, it was like a week later that I mentioned something about Wim Hof and she was like, oh yeah, this other client, she's like, I've been doing cold showers for years. It has been like life changing for me. I totally recommend it. So I was like, okay, I got to try it. So the best way that I've read to like start and acclimate is that you get into the shower with like a regular warm temperature that you like, like hot, warm, whatever, the normal shower temperature that you like. And then you just slowly begin to get cooler and cooler and cooler so that by the end, you're basically cold it, or it is, a, it is cold water coming out. So that's what I did. I ended up doing like my whole routine hair, face, razor, whatever. And then at the end, I like went a little bit cooler. And then I was like, that's not too bad. And then I went a little bit cooler and I was like, went a little bit cooler and then stood under it for up to like 
you want to do at least a minute or 30 seconds. I think it says under the cold water submerged, submerged or whatever, full body. And so I don't know if I did quite the whole minute, but I did like 20 to 30 seconds. And I was like, this wasn't actually that bad. And I got out of the shower and I didn't even notice that I right away did not have to go and like lay on my bed in my towel and like recoup. And because it's so interesting when like, when you just cope with something and you're surviving and you're just doing it. And when you don't have to do it, you kind of like forget that you ever did that. So then I like got out of the shower, I got dressed and then I like was doing my makeup or whatever in my hair. And then it wasn't until like, till that happened, like, I don't know, for weeks that then I was like, wait a second, I haven't had to like recoup in my bed anymore. And so I hadn't even noticed that this, that I wasn't needing that time to recoup. And it was basically instant from starting those cold showers. So I told Chelsea, I'm like, you need to start taking cold showers so that we can do an episode about it. And she basically was like, fuck you. <laughs> I just, I have to just say that Cassie is probably the only human on this freaking planet who could convince me to take cold showers. Because as I mentioned, I can take hour long, hot, <laughs> hot showers. Yeah. Like, talk about drying out your skin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's me. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Chelsea wasn't yeah. stoked when I was like, let's do an episode about cold showers. <laughs> and I was like, we need to both do it so that we can both share our experiences. <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> so Bye. here we are like six months later. <laughs> Y'all, I, I sort of did it. Yeah, and I've been <laughs> doing it, it, like, basically all the time. And I even actually did a couple of tests where I didn't go cold and I stayed hot and got out. And I felt, like, fucked up after. And um, so for those of you – okay, let me – I don't know, remember if I said this or not. I could only shower at night. Showering in the morning was literally not an option. And if I did shower in the morning, you could say goodbye to like anything that I had planned for that morning or early afternoon. So I truly only could shower at night pretty much right before bed because it took so many spoons and it was so draining and I would feel so sick after and lightheaded and dizzy that I just literally had to, and I would often just like have wet hair in the towel and just lay in bed and just like be here. Um, with changing to doing the cold showers, um, I can take a shower anytime and I mostly actually take them in the mornings these days and I just like twist my hair and put it in a clip and then just let it air dry throughout the day. Um, so that's a huge difference. I no longer have to like have a 30 minute rest period after showering. Um, I don't push it. I don't, I try not to make sure that I'm like rushing after a shower, but I do like, I am able to get out, get dressed put a little bit of makeup on, leave my hair wet and let it air dry in some way. And I'm good to go. So I haven't blow dried my hair. So it's, what is it? September, end of middle September right now, end of September. No. I haven't blow dried my hair since like probably January. Um, cause of the length. And so I don't, so for those of you who still need to blow dry your hair, that might still take a little bit extra energy. I eliminated that out of my routine. Um, Anyways, so um, that's one of the biggest things that if you are spoony struggling in the shower, um, you may be able to try this and you don't have to carve out so much time anymore. And if you are like me and can only shower at night because of how many spoons it takes, you might be able to change that and be able to shower in the morning now. Um, so yeah, the best way that I found that I like to do it is that I, I go into the shower at the regular hot temperature that I like. And I just progressively, like, I don't know, every couple of minutes, I just get cooler and cooler to by the end, it's like basically cold. And I did read that the best way to get the benefits of the cold is making sure that your entire body is under the cold water um, for at least a minute at the end and getting the high circulation areas like your armpits and you know where your organs are your body your lymphatic system like your um your bum like so i definitely like stand under it and i don't just do like face and the front i like turn around and you know i like stick my butt out like whatever and now i actually like got a shower with a shower arm 
drastic because I needed to be able to wash my bum after the surgery. So I just have a, I don't have a bathtub in my shower. I just have a standing shower and I bought a different shower head on Amazon. That's got the like shower head and an arm additionally so that I can use it to wash. And I do that now with the cold as well. Um, by the way, that shower head was like 26 freaking dollars and it was one of the best $26 I've ever spent. And I'm realizing now that we should list it in our resources on our mywellnesshub.co. Writing it down. For that. I got you. Yeah, because actually it's like amazing. And the um, pressure that it puts out is really nice on the skin because I do know that some people with like fibromyalgia and such, mm-hmm. like the water pressure coming out of your shower head can feel like needles on your skin. And so this one I really like. So we are going to post it. And so, um, if you have pets that you have to wash, <laughs> We have one of those shower heads oh, for our yeah. dogs and it's a game changer. Oh, that is so a game changer. Even if it's for not dogs. just for you, like there's many reasons why you should get one. Anyways, totally. so cold showers, like Cassie mentioned, I was not excited at all. <laughs> but one thing that I liked is Cassie, when you explained your process with me of like how you get in the shower and it's like your normal temperature and you slowly make it colder that felt a lot less scary to me because I do really, really enjoy hot showers. And I'm not going to lie. There were some days where I was like, fuck it. I had a really long day and I'm tired and I just want to take a hot shower the entire Mm -hmm. time. And I did, but it made it a lot easier just knowing like, okay, I washed my hair, turn it down a little bit. I put conditioner in my hair, turn it down a little bit. Yeah. And the more research I've kind of done, it really doesn't have to be your entire shower that no. ending is really what seems to make the big difference. Exactly. So if you're like Chelsea and you're like, hot showers are life, <laughs> then you can still do this and get the benefits from it. I don't think I personally felt a huge difference, but I also don't feel quite as shitty getting out of a, just even a hot shower. Mm-hmm. But I did kind of feel like my skin was a little less dry. By not blasting it with hot water the entire time. Yeah. So. Yeah. See, so that's good. So the from what we read, like the couple ways that you can do it, and it says that to get the most out of your shower, um, it's recommended that you spend between three to five minutes in water that is as cold as you can possibly bear. So let's take that into like spoony language, and even if that means just one minute at the end start with that. You don't or have to go just sh- like 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Or 10 seconds. Yeah. Great. Great point. Charles. You don't have to like go straight into like five minutes of as cold water as you can possibly bear. Like that's pretty intense. Um, so, you know, start wherever's best for you. And then there's two ways you can approach it. The first is called the hot, cold contrast method, which is you start the shower on its coldest setting. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> and you step under the water and count to 30. <laughs> no rushing it. Say something Blech. like a hippopotamus. I know, right? In between oh, each count. Fuck and that. Then, <laughs> I know. And turn the shower back to warm for 10 seconds and repeat six times or more. Okay, so one. Go. Who got time to count 30 and then 10 I, and then 30, six times? Dude, I would get is, so bored. I mean, that's like pretty cold, you know? Uh, yeah, cold. no, no. So for those spoonies out there, I don't super recommend this method just because like our body temperatures can be weird to regulate anyway and like your blood pressure and Mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff like especially if you're a potsy out there or something like that might be really intense to be going back and forth between those temperatures and that might be too much so the second is the gradual immersion method which is what i like and what chelsea did too and this is what i do now and so you start the shower on a comfortable temperature you gradually begin to lower the temperature until it is as cold as you can withstand. Stay under the cold water for a minimum of three minutes. Make sure you immerse your whole body under the water, especially high parts of blood flow like your armpit, spine, face, neck, crotch, and backside. It's best to let yourself drip dry instead of using a towel. This will increase um, fat loss benefits because you're burning more calories as your body reheats itself, which is kind of interesting. But I didn't. So for anyone that's like, oh, I'm gonna do this and lose a bunch of weight, it's probably not that many calories. So don't stress. Right. <laughs> Plus, like the way that I saw it too was like, as it says, like you're burning more calories as your body reheats itself. Um, so 
I took that a little bit differently of like the body is having to work to, you know, reheat itself and like get the circulation going. Mm -hmm. And when I, I, the way that I saw it was like, so this is not scientifically, this is just my opinion and how I felt. But when I would come out of like the hot showers, my body was trying to almost cool itself off and regulate and adjust to the temperature in the bedroom or whatever. And it was like too much to go from a nice, hot, relaxing, warm shower to like a cold coldness in the bedroom, a towel on my head. So not releasing out the heat through my head, then taking the towel off my head and having wet hair. And then I tried to like put clothes on and then was it too many clothes? And then I'm sweating. And it was like this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so when I changed to cooling down by the time I was out of the shower, the outside temperature, like my bedroom or my bathroom or whatever felt like normal. And then I did notice that I didn't feel the need to like wrap up in a towel or anything. And I could just sort of like pat myself dry. So I didn't let myself fully drip dry. I would like pat myself dry, but I noticed that I didn't feel that need to like hurry up and get my hair in a towel because I was freezing with wet hair. I just, I would, I experienced huge freaking differences. It does say, make sure the water is cold, warm water doesn't count. So when you are doing that method, the, uh, what is it called? The gradual immersion method. Um, you do want to make sure you end up with it cold at the end and then take deep breaths and doing it daily if possible. And some of the benefits are that it can relieve symptoms of depression, mm -hmm. that studies have shown that the intense stimulation of cold water receptors can offer relief from symptoms of depression. I also read that it has something to do with like the shock of like your brain experiencing like the shock of cold water can help oh, yeah. kind of, like reset something um, in your brain that can help combat depression too. I am not a neuroscience expert. So yeah, that but, was, you know, that was as far as my understanding went. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're just offering you people the little bit of research that we did on it and that we've been practicing it and self-experience. Um, but it does say the body's reaction to the cold bombards the brain with electrical impulses from nerve endings on the skin. This mm -hmm. is said to have an antidepressive mood boosting effect with no known side effects. Um, it improves the skin. Hot water over time can weaken and dry out the skin by washing away its natural oils. And your hair. And your hair. That, that is true. I have heard that about hair for a long time. Yeah. Cold water also tightens the skin and shrinks pores, which can help prevent skin damage and breakouts. It will improve immunity. Having cold showers does great things for the, the blood circulation, immunity, and overall health. When cold water hits the body, it increases circulation and encourages the heart and arteries to transport blood more efficiently. Furthermore, the deep breathing from the shock of the cold water stimulates lymphatic movement and better oxi oxidation of the blood. So I thought that was particularly interesting because the first time I read it, I was like, what do you mean it improves circulation? Because when you are immersed in something cold or if you're just like, if you step outside into like a cold weather situation, the blood from your extremities gets kind of sucked into your internal organs because it wants to keep your things that are keeping you alive, happy and healthy and warm. And right. your body's like, I don't give a fuck about my fingers. I want yeah. my organs to be healthy. And so I was like, but how does that improve circulation? And I thought it was really interesting as I was reading more about it of when that constriction happens in those extremities of those blood vessels, it actually not only kind of pushes more circulation to like your organs to help them have more blood, but it kind of forces your blood to go through like really of the, the really small blood vessels in your body as well. So that way maybe there's some cells that aren't getting as much blood, blood flow that all of a sudden are getting a little bit more, which I thought was super interesting. That's super interesting. Right? Okay. See, we are getting like super sciencey, sassy, sucky, shivering showers and science. <laughs> that is way too many s words <laughs> i know but it's it's super fun yeah see and so yeah the the lymphatic benefits are one of the things that i absolutely noticed because i would get out of the shower okay like even when i was in the shower my toes would begin to turn purple and black often and like super dark red and like look really weird and puffy and my hands would be puffy and my knees would hurt and my elbows would be sore and i would be like literally puffy from taking a fucking shower and um, I absolutely notice a difference with the cold showers. I am not puffy when I get out at all. And my toes do not turn purple and black anymore in the shower. 
And for family who knows me, they've known that's been a thing for years. This has like eliminated that. So I, and then I, yeah, I really have like found huge benefits from it. Incre it also increases your resistance to stress. Having a regular cold shower is an amazing way to increase your focus, will power, willpower and resistance to external stimulus. When you commit to a cold shower and overcome the initial discomfort, you are practicing tolerance and exercising your rational mind in a conflicting situation. Therefore, basically making you a Zen monk at that moment. <laughs> and don't we all want to be a Zen monk? Well, and I really like that point of how it um, helps you manage your stress. If people are like, what do you, so you're putting yourself in a more stressful situation is mm -hmm. helping me manage your stress. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but taking a cold shower, I mean, it is a stressor on your body and on your mind because you're like, oh, it's fucking cold. I hate this. But it does help kind of prime your brain for going through that stress response that we all have that has been ingrained in our system since we were cavemen running around trying to stay away from saber tooth tigers. Mm -hmm. And so it helps us learn how to go into stressful situations and then come out of them. And yeah. the way our world is set up is we tend to go into stressful situations and then we never, our brain never leaves that stressful situation. And so that's why we all have like or I'm really gen overgeneralizing here, but so many people have really high stress responses. Well, I also like time. that you just said that your brain doesn't leave the stressful situation mm -mm. because um, I was actually just reading about like combating negative thoughts last night. And in there, one of the things says um, your brain doesn't know the difference between like reality and thoughts sometimes. Nope. And so like your brain not leaving that stressful situation. That's really interesting. And also it's so funny because actually just last night, like my son was experiencing some stress. He's feeling a little stressed out about like 2020, you know, like just everything in the world. <laughs> Him and everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. For those out there who have kids, like don't forget that although they're children, they are still being affected by all of this as well. Well, depending and on how old they are, they don't know, they can't comprehend. True. Any, some of anyway, that's true. continue your story. But he's 12. And so he definitely is at the age where he's understanding and life is a little bit different. And he was talking about how he feels kind of like overwhelmed with stress. And I was like, you know, do you want to talk about it? And he's like, no. And he like leaves my bedroom. And so I gave him like half an hour. And then I went in, and I was like, just so you know, I love you. I will always love you. I'm here for you. And I will always be here for you whenever you want to talk about anything, if you ever want to talk about it. And he, and I was like, I always will always will do my best to help you. And he was like, yeah, well, you know, you're great at like talking about stress, but you can't, you never take it away. He says, you never, yeah. He's like, you never take it away. And I was like, okay, what do you mean? You know? And he was like, well, he's like, yeah, you're really great at talking about it, but you don't like take the stress away, take action with it. You don't do anything about it. And I was like, okay, so what actions would you want me to take to take your stress away? And he thought about this for quite some time and didn't have an answer because the reality is most of the time, no one can take away your stress. You have to figure out the ways to like get yourself out of a, solu a, a situation or how to deal with it on your own. And that's kind of what I explained to him. I said, you know, the reason why you're probably having a hard time coming up with actionable steps that I could take is because stress that's, that's why stress is such a big deal in society and with humans and forever and always is because like it can't just usually be something that can just be fixed and taken away and um i was like all i can really do is teach you the best ways to help cope and manage your stress and how to deal with it and work through it and then i gave an example like sometimes you do have the things like last week i was really stressed about not being able to drive him to cross country because i couldn't sit down from my surgery and uh my mother-in-law was like i'll drive him all week don't you worry about it and so i gave an example Yes, she took away my stress in that situation because she's like, I'll just drive him. Don't worry. I said, but as, it's as rare. Long as you weren't sitting there feeling guilty about still not being able to take him. Which you know that I did every day. And I was texting her and I was like, I might be able to drive today, you know? So, so it only <laughs> sort of took that stressor away. Exactly. But I did kind of give that example. And I was like, so I told him that. I was like, you know, this is an example that she could take away my stress in that moment. Secondly, though, I'm pretty stressed out about having to go poop every morning right now because it hurts like a son of a bitch and it takes me like six to eight hours to recover from one bowel movement. And I was like, no one can do that for me. 
you know, I'm like, no nope. one can help that stress. I only, I can figure out how best to cope with it and deal with it. And anyway, I share all that because I think it is a little bit of a reminder, like you said, with like the cold showers, helping relieve stress you and like putting yourself in a stressful situation. It is nice because it is helping you have mind over matter. And it does give you that little sense of like capableness and willpower and in a world where we are all experiencing stress, even where, you know, 12 year olds are walking around with a huge amount of stress on their shoulders. Like we all need to find ways to cope and deal with stress. So I hope that that didn't go too far off track, but I felt like it was relevant. So I wanted to yeah, share it. And I kind of feel like we should do an episode on it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we should. Why the hell not? Right. So, so yeah. So I think that that I'm just like browsing over my notes here. And I think that, um oh yeah it does say like the cold showers can also help with better muscle recovery as cold water hits the body it causes the blood flow the blood to flow at a faster rate within the blood vessels this in turn speeds up the circulation of blood flow to the cardiovascular and circulatory systems therefore improving blood pressure and cardiovascular health by carrying oxygen faster to the heart and regenerating the muscles and joints faster which kind of goes off of what you were saying too chelsea so yeah, there is some like sciencey facts about how cold showers are mm -hmm. actually scientifically proven to be beneficial. Um, we definitely would recommend if you do want to give it a try, start that uh, like steady immersion. What was it called? Slow immersion method or whatever. Yeah, and start slow with it. Like, mm -hmm. don't feel like you have to take your shower and every like ten seconds make it colder. Like, yeah. Pick a shower and if literally you're only going to make it kind of cold for the last 10 seconds, do it. See what feels right yeah. for you. Uh, and you notice that if it, if it's helping you, then try a little bit longer, try a little bit mm -hmm. longer, but don't feel like you need to shock your system. No, no, no you you'll feel, feel bad. <laughs> no, no. And it, I think I definitely, for all you spoonies would, would totally agree with that hundred percent. Like take it slow because you need to see how your body reacts to it. Um, and yeah, I think it's like with the first time I tried it, I did my entire shower routine like normal. And then towards the end, I was like, okay, I'm going to cool it down a little bit. And then I was like, this isn't really too bad. And by the time I got to cold, it really didn't feel too bad. And um, I actually kind of liked, especially I liked how the cold water felt on like my legs and my feet because they were kind of like purple and swollen and puffy and hot. and um, it actually like felt really good even the first time I gave it a try. And so now I'd probably say that I do my shampoo at the regular nice hot temperature that I go down a tiny bit while I do my conditioner sitting in my hair. And while my conditioner is in my hair, I like shave my legs, shave my armpits and whatever. And I do that like just a little bit cooler than when I started. Then I rinse out the shampoo a little or the, the conditioner a little bit cooler and then I go into body wash and then I go quite a bit cooler as I rinse off the body wash. And then I'm pretty much cold for washing my face, rinsing off body wash lather. And then I go as cold as I can stand it for probably 30 seconds before I get out. So that's kind of what I do, but I've worked myself up to that. So like Chelsea said, take it real slow. And we definitely want to hear what you all think about it. Um, yes. Because I did not come across any articles out there that actually talked about cold showers specifically for chronically ill. And so it would be kind of fun to hear some feedback from all of you and maybe we can come up with our own article about it um, and experience and quote some of you people for experiences and stuff. So I have a master's degree. I know how to write research articles. Sort of, <laughs> kind of. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So definitely like, you know, tag us in a shower selfie. You don't have to be naked. It can be a mock shower selfie <laughs> or, you know, just shoot us a DM on Instagram or something and tell us that you tried it and what you thought about it. Um, we always love to hear. And this is one that I would be curious to kind of like gather a little bit of like research experience from all of you and we can come up with our own little um, yeah. helpful guide. Let us know. Yep. <laughs> I will say that I'm not doing much cold on my butt right now. I will say I am like all about the hot water on my butt because that's and what I, I think need right now. You also, again, if there's just some days where you're just like, fuck this, I'm not doing it. Don't, don't force it. It's yeah. okay. But I would be curious to see if any of you 
try it out. And if you're able to get a little bit more of a like normal person's shower routine capable capabilities with it, because I definitely did experience that. And as Chelsea and I said, it's been around six months now that I've been doing it and six months of Chelsea fighting, wanting to do it. <laughs> yep. And now here we are with this episode and we can't wait to hear from all of you. And yay. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening to our sassy shower. We probably could have been sassy or it, it wasn't as sassy as I thought it was going to be. But yeah, let us know and we will be in your ears next week. Yay. Bye, everybody. Bye.